Glad some people are here. The others are joining in shortly. Twisted perspectives. What does it really mean? It's an upside down thing, isn't it? It's uh, probably looking into the wrong direction, or whatever the interpretation is, it fits perfectly to my situation in my life. And I had a dream, and so had God. I just called it out because it is a presentation that I've never, ever done before. Brand new, just finished around lunch. I was asked, could you tell us a little bit about your life? Now, <laughs> I'm not the youngest anymore. How do you put all that stuff together? But when I did, it was a blessing. Thinking about all the different situations in my life, and I thought, well, that's worth to share. Ask a question here. Any of you ever had a dream of a certain country? Like something you imagined would be absolutely wonderful to go there and even live there. Have you? Countries such as? New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, right. Israel. Okay. Yeah, there's beautiful places out there. I had such a dream, and it was Australia. And the story goes that my uncle came back after 20 years of living in Australia and Papua New Guinea. And I was a little boy, at the age of four. And he took me in his laps and he started speaking about these wonderful experiences he had. And they were tremendous to the ears of a young boy. And I couldn't believe what he was telling me. And inside I felt, one day I want to go there. I want to see that myself. I want to experience all that that my uncle had. And the time came, and I did go to Australia. And what I saw was so amazing, overwhelming, that I thought, ah, oh, more and more, I'm yearning to go back there. And I did, I did, 16 times more than 60 months of traveling. And at the end of that period, I thought, that is it. I'm not going to come back anymore. I will stay here. <laughs> what a country it is. Beautiful, seven and a half million square kilometers. And early in the morning, you see the rise of the sun on Uluru, the so-called mountain of the Aboriginal people in Central Australia. And when you go there, you feel something astonishing, and the landscape, and I love the outback. It has always been a place that I wanted to go. It was my dream. It was something that I thought would become reality, but then the vision expanded. Well, what I mean by that? Years passed. I have not been to Australia yet. Grown up in the age of four, five, six. And before I actually went to Australia, I got that invitation from friends of mine saying, would you like to come along? I say, where? We're going to cross the Sahara. The Sahara? How are you going to do that? Well, we, we buy an old car and we try to manage that. An old car to cross the Sahara. Right, okay, why not? And so I joined in. And we went, and it was absolutely amazing. 10,000 kilometers of a very heavy track. I almost lost my life. What I, did, what I did lose was about 10 kilogram. I came back pretty flat. Someone could see my six pack I had in the age of 21, a long time ago. Anyhow, it was an amazing experience to travel through there. And I thought, why? The world is beautiful, the way God creates it. I'm coming from a Christian home, and my parents always taught me about the Creator God, and whatever I saw out there confirmed His majestic work. I wanted to be part of it. But I had my dream, and it, maybe it wasn't God's dream at all. Coming to the West, after crossing the Sahara, I came to a place called Benin. And the people I met there and the children, it was all very, very nice and very exotic. I've never seen things like that before. And I thought, wow, another beautiful place, much different, much different than the Sahara itself. And then I learned about other gods. Now, the God I believed in created heaven and earth on six day, and, and he rested on the Sabbath day. It's something that was grabbable. It, scripture came alive to me. But when I met these cultures... Now, these are altars, and you see creatures that have been slaughtered and put on top. People aggressively reacted on my photography 
they don't want their gods to be captured. And I learned about that we are living in a diverse world. And if you go throughout Africa, you'll see that almost everywhere. There are tendencies of worshiping other gods no matter where they come from. And the real gods seem to be far, far away. At the end of the trip, and it, I call it the desire to live. At the end of the trip, really, I, I felt very uncomfortable. And it was a Tuesday night. I was in my bed laying there, and I felt something's wrong with my body. I started becoming headache, and it started shaking. It went worse and worse and worse and worse. And I was on my bed laying there, totally uncontrolled of what's happening to my body, and it jumped up and down this very shaggy bed I had, and I thought, that is it. The fever went up to like 42 degrees. Everyone surrounding me tried to help me, but it seemed to be impossible. And at that very moment, it reminded me that my parents taught me to pray. Sometimes situations that have to happen before you actually think about God. And I folded my hands and said, Lord, if you really exist, if you do exist, you must help me now. And still my body was jumping up and down on that bed. And I knew that was the very last moments of my life. And I said, God, if you really exist, you must help me now. Because in a few minutes, it's going to be too late. Believe it or not. Before I said, Amen, I was as healthy as I'm here right now. Can you believe it? Honestly. No more shaking whatsoever. I it was gone, just instantly gone. And I said, what a powerful God I'm serving. I want to honor Him. I want to do everything in my power to present my love and the talents that may be there to give Him to the Lord. And my desire to live became new. And I said, that is it. But... There was an encounter. I came back from Africa, lived my life, and eventually, at the very year the Berlin Wall fell, I finished my apprenticeship, everything, my studies, the music, and so on, and I went and took a flight to Australia. Finally, here I am. Went down to Melbourne in the south, took a bus up to the north, and for some reason, I stopped in a place called North of Brisbane. And I went out to the bus. I don't know why, but there I was, and I went to church the next day. In church, it was in 1989, I met a few people, among them one family from Germany. They have just escaped from Africa coming to Australia because of the political situation. And they, they talked to me in German, which I really loved after about six weeks traveling. And I said, well, what are you doing here? And they told me a little bit about their problems. And I said, that's fine. And someone gave me an apartment. And another German, and he said, you can stay here as long as you want, for free. Oh, wonderful. As a young boy, you know, quite interesting. Have all your freedom. And that's what I did. Moved in on a Sabbath night. And Sunday I was sitting there reading the great controversy when I heard that voice through the window, Australia is quite hot a place, and she said, Henry, I said, oh, you are, okay. Would you like to come to join us? That was the family I met on the day before. And I said, whoa, I got all my freedom here. Why should I join? But I knew they had four kids, and I said, well, if she starts cooking every day for those kids, they may have some leftovers for me. I better join in. I get my daily food. <laughs> and I did. I joined this family for four weeks. And during some time later, the guy started speaking to me about some amazing experiences, and he announced that he's actually coming from South Africa. All right. Didn't know anything about it. Never been there. And he started opening up an interesting story to me, 1989. And finally, he spoke a ver about a very interesting and crazy guy, an amazing guy, to be honest. I said, what's his name? He said, Professor Feit. Never heard of it. Who is he? He's a scientist. Uh-huh. Okay. But he opened up his story, and he, he told me all details. And you know who that guy was? The very carpenter. 
the very carpenter. YouTube. I'm Walter Feit from Amazing Discoveries. If you'd like to learn more or you would like to subscribe, then click visit our webpage, donate, share, and we would like to hear from you.